If you don't know me, this is Andy Laszlo uh, with New Life Ministries uh, in Helper, Utah. And uh, you know, a lot of people are asking me all the time, uh, is what's going on in the world today? Is what's going on in our country uh, the last times? Is Jesus about to return? And, uh, you know, Jesus talked to, to his disciples about his second coming and establishing the kingdom on earth. And uh, I'm going to share with you some things he had to say about it. And uh, let's just get into the word of God. We're in Luke chapter 21 and verse 7. The disciples asked him, saying, Teacher, when will these things be and what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? He said to them, Take heed that you not be deceived. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near. So in a discussion about, is this the end times, Jesus says, Take heed, be very careful. Liars and deceivers are going to come. I like what one translation says, don't go running after them because they say they have the end times revelation that you need. Here's why I made this note on your, on your uh, screen there. Stay connected to your local church. Stay in a, in a place that has a reputation. Stay with people that you can trust. You know, I've been pastoring this church for 42 years, and whatever we can say about me, I sure am not perfect, but I've been preaching the truth from God's word. Be careful. He's warning us about those deceivers who come and say, gee, we're in the end times. You better follow me. Be careful of that. All right, still in Luke 21, uh, verse 9. When you hear of wars and commotions, are we hearing of that every day? Do not be terrified. These things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. He's saying, I know what's going on. You make sure you're ready. Then he said to them, nation will arise against nation. We have that. Kingdom against kingdom. We have that. Great earthquakes in various places. We have them all the time. Doesn't it seem that there's more than usual? There will be great earthquakes, uh, famines, pestilences, diseases, outbreaks, viruses. We have all the stuff. And he says, there will be fearful signs and great signs from heaven. You know, when the blood moon uh, revelation and teaching was going on, a lot of people heard that and said, is this the end? Is this the end? Well, they are signs of the times that we should be reading to make sure that we are ready. Here's what I said. Oh, that verse ends with, by your patience, possess your souls. Be aware of the signs of the times. If you've got people, and I'm one of them, saying there are enough things going on in this world today, we should be getting ready for Christ to return. Please be aware of those signs and let them do in your life what they're supposed to do, which is to get you ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. All right, verse 34. Take heed to yourselves, lest, you be, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the cares of this life. I know I say this to my church, New Life Ministries, all the time. Some of you watching this online, I'll say what I usually say. My big fear for the people I'm ministering to is not that they'll be uh, involved with carousing and drunkenness. Now, if that shoe fits you, please do something about us. He's warning us not to get tangled up with that stuff. But here's the one that worries me, even with my own folks. Cares of this life. You know, if we're fortunate to be, a, to be born in America, we have more food and more clothing. We have more money than most people in this world. And the cares of, the li of this life are all the things that tangle you up paying bills. You can be enjoying the blessings and the, the money that you have and get sidetracked from God. So the big one 
is that we take heed to ourselves so we don't get sidetracked by the cares of this life. Here's the point I made on your outline there. It is time for you and for me to do a personal exam of our relationship with God. Make sure this world is not sidetracking us from relationship with God. And my definition of relationship with God you're talking to him regularly. That means you're praying and worshiping. You're hearing his voice regularly and you're obeying the instructions that he gives you. That's the reality of relationship with God. Be careful. He's warning us. The times we're in, make sure your relationship with God is what it's supposed to be. Verse 35. And he's talking about the things he warned us about up to this point. The deceivers. The signs of the times, being aware of them, paying attention. He says, these things, if you're not careful, will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the, on the face of the earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all, the, all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Let's take the word for exactly what it says. Watch and pray pray. He said you should pray all the time that you are not deceived, that you escape the deceptions of the enemy in the times that we're in. Pray for that all the time and pray that you stand before the Son of Man. You know there's a lot of believers out there that think wrongly think that their behavior doesn't matter because they're washed in the blood of Christ. That is a lie. That is a false doctrine. He's warning us to be sure we're praying and being very careful so that we're, number one, not deceived and so that we hang on to our faith until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's take that warning, making sure we're watching and making sure we're praying just the way we're supposed to. Now, verse, we're over in Luke 19 now and verse 11. As they heard these things, still, still speaking about the end times, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. This is for us today. He said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. He called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and he said to them, do business till I come. This is a kingdom principle we need to be paying very, very careful attention to because of the times we are in. You and I have been entrusted with kingdom grace and gifts. Now grace is God's power that he gives you freely to anoint you to do his will. He doesn't give it because you worked hard to deserve it or earn it. He anoints you with his power to enable you to do his will. That's what his grace is. And he gives you grace and he gives you gifts. You are how you are because God made you that way. And he gave you, with the grace and gifts, he gave you responsibilities. There are things God wants you to do and expects you to do as children of God, as, as part of his kingdom. You have gifts and grace and you have responsibilities and he expects us to be using those gifts, fulfilling our purpose when he comes back. Verse 14. His citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. I know that if you're a follower of Christ, that's not directly speaking to you, but please take the warning. There are some people that have no intention of going to work for the kingdom. That's those folks I was telling you about, oh, I'm under the blood, I don't have to do anything. I'm not working my way into the kingdom. That's true. We don't, we don't enter the kingdom because of our works. But our Lord and Savior says, I've given you responsibility. I need you doing business in my kingdom until I return. That's our Lord telling us what to do with our lives. We don't want to be the people who don't want to say yes to God's call to go to work for the kingdom. That's the warning he's giving us right here. All right, verse 15. So it was when he returned, having received the kingdom, 
he commanded these servants to whom he had given the money I uh, called them to him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading he came to the first say, saying saying oh sorry the first came to him saying master your mina has earned 10 minas you know let me give you a quick definition of the mina it actually was the equivalent of about three months worth of wages so when they received the money it would have been very easy to just go party with it or to misuse it but they were given three months wages that they had to manage that they had to be careful with and that they had to use according to the plans and purposes of God and he expected a return on that master your mina has earned 10 more minas he said to him well done good servant listen to this carefully this is a word for you and a word for me because you were faithful in a very little have authority over 10 cities the second came saying master your mina has earned five minas Likewise, he said to him, you also be over five cities. There's something to be said about the reward they were given. They were given more authority. The reward is given for the increase you create with what God has given you. And reward is only given for increase. And I want you to understand, this has to do with you operating in the authority that God gives us. You know, we want to get our prayers answered. We want to have authority to put the devil in his place and stop him from stealing from us. An authority issue is based on you using what God has given you and producing fruit by the gifts he's given you. It's an authority deal. We want to pass that test. Verse 20, another came saying, Master, here's your mina which I've kept put away in a handkerchief. I feared you because you're an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit. You reap what you did not sow. He said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew I was an austere man. In other words, if I'm who you thought I was, why didn't you do something about it? You, you said, I collect what I did not deposit. I reap what I do not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming, I might have collected it with interest? There is a failure, or sorry, there is a consequence for failing to use the gifts that God has given you. Don't try to get out of it. Don't try to reject the instruction of Christ. Remember, when you use what God has given you, your faith will increase. Your authority to operate in the kingdom of God and in this world is going to be improved when you use what God has given you. The only way to fail to pass this test is not to try to use the gifts that God has given you for kingdom purposes, especially in the times we are in right now. One more thought for you, verse 24. To those who stood by, he said, take the mina from him and give it to him who has 10 minas. They said, master, he has, already has 10 is what they're saying. To everyone who has will be given. From him who does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. You heard the saying, use it or lose it. Here it is in the Bible. Bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, slay them before me. On your outline, I said, your ability to give and receive as followers of Christ is linked to this principle of taking what he's given you. It's a gift, it's his grace. Use it, bring an increase, and let him bless you. He'll give you even more. You'll be even more, uh, uh, more fruitful in kingdom things. That's the way we want to live our lives. That is how God expects us to live our lives and use the grace and the blessings that he's given for us. Here's the note I want to end on to sum this up. I found this on the internet. Warning, Jesus is coming very soon. Have you prepared? I believe that to be true. Don't try to figure out whether it's today or tomorrow or 10 or 20 years. We believe he's coming very soon. What I've shared with you today, this is what we're supposed to be doing if we believe he's coming very soon. Number one, do a personal inventory in your own life about your walk with God. Are you doing the things Jesus has instructed you to do? Are you in a relationship with God? Are you hearing his voice and obeying the instructions he gives you? Are you connected to your church? Are you fulfilling 
your purpose in that church and are you helping that church fulfill its purpose in the kingdom of God and in this world? Remember, deceivers are coming. Stay connected to who you know as men and women of God. Are you aware of the signs that are going on? I've shared them with you briefly today. You don't need me. The world is in a crazy state. That should tell us to be ready for Jesus' return. Are you paying attention to the signs? Are you being careful with yourself? Make sure you're listening and spending time in the Word of God so you can follow the Spirit. Avoid that deception. Be careful with yourself. And are you watching and praying? See what's going on in the world. Pray, pray, pray that God keeps you safe from the enemy's attacks and that he keeps you close to him so you can hear his voice and follow his leading so he can keep you safe and keep you in position to be ready for his return. Let's pray. Father, I sow this word in the good ground of my brothers and sisters who are hearing and receiving this word. I pray and I declare this word will produce 30, 60, and 100-fold return in their lives. They'll be, they'll be ready and looking forward with joy to the coming of Jesus Christ. Finish what you've begun in them by planting these seeds. Lord, I, I, I look forward to hearing good reports of your spirit bringing blessings and the provision of God into our lives. I speak these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, thank you so much for joining me here online, and I'll see you again soon.